So I, I slightly changed my title actually after I'd taken the consistency to sort of challenge the challenges really. Um, if we think about trying to keep our module templates um, designed and then staff actually using them, it poses some challenges to staff. So we're going to kind of think about some of the challenges that we see with staff, but some of the benefits that clearly having a um, most of their modules following a template really brings to the students. Uh, and I'm sure it's something we've all seen that all the academic staff say, oh, I've got to, I need to set my module up to see, suit the way I want to use it. And the students say, I can't find. So when I first started at Dundee, um, we're going back now to uh, eight years ago, so seven years ago even. So in this, it, you know, we had Blackboard, it was Blackboard original. Um, it had become very, very organic. We had nothing, there was no baseline in terms of what should be in an online module. Um, some disciplines at various points in the past had sort of had templates, but because modules were rolled over year on year, um, every year they changed. And so every year people added in a bit, took out a bit, um, and different academics uh, put bits in that they liked and different, and then somebody else would come along and teach it and didn't like it, so he completely changed it. So it was a bit chaotic. And for the first few years um, that I was there, uh, our help box was full of students saying, I can't find my coursework. And we'd trot off to the module, we'd have a look and hmm, I don't blame you, I'm not surprised you can't find the coursework. Um, so roll forward to um, the academic year 1920. We had just started to um, pilot Blackboard Ultra for the base navigation and we had one or two people who were using it as very, very early doctors to start their course, their modules. We we were then thinking about having a wider um, pilot for the academic year 20 to 21. And of course, we hadn't quite anticipated the fact that come summer of 2020, people wouldn't be know, wouldn't know whether they were teaching online or in person. We had students who were trying to access and indeed do their courses on their mobile phones, on old laptops, on you name it. And so we made the decision. We also had an awful lot of people saying Blackboard won't do. And actually it did. They just didn't know how to do it. And I think the thing that, that many of us would have seen that, you know, the VLE had become a bit of a digital dumping ground rather than anything else. So we thought, right, we've got to get everybody up to scratch with how they use the tool. Um, we're going to check, we've got to have something that's going to work really well, you know, whether the students have got their mobile phone, whether they've got the top of the range computer, you know, whether they've um, got a decent bandwidth, whether they're struggling trying to like tether off their phone and they live halfway up some mountain somewhere. Um, now, whether that's, you know, in uh, Perthshire or in Ethiopia, either way, they've got a rotten signal. So, we decided to move, um, Blackboard Ultra was designed from the base up really to be both accessible and um, mobile friendly. So very, very uh, reactive. So we thought, right, we're gonna do all of that. And as a result, we divided our staff development into two main threads. One was how to, just looking at the functionality of it. And I did another one on, um, another thing on Blend Your Module, which was, um, a course really looking at how to design effective um, blended learning and teaching, particularly when you didn't actually know what the blend was. So I think like many people, we looked at the ABC model. Um, and of course the ABC model was designed for um, what, we, what we might have called a known blend. Whereas we were trying to support our staff to how to teach in this unknown blend when you sort of, you didn't really know from week to week where you were teaching um, who was going to be there and all sorts of things. Running alongside that, we worked with the Learning and Teaching Committee to develop a baseline of the content that should be in a module. Um, and we ended up creating a default template. 
Now, working alongside of us, we'd had, as well as these very few um, early adopters, we had um, some of our schools have educational technologists. Um, most schools had a digital champion and the digital champions were set up at the start of the pandemic as people who are both in tech enthusiasts, but primarily in the real thing we wanted them for was for people who were teaching enthusiasts. So they were playing with it as we were playing with it and getting to know it. Um, so they started to test things out. And as soon as we started to um, have the baseline and we could structure the templates to exactly fit that, we looked at that and we looked at what schools were doing. Um, and we attempted to set up a set of exemplar courses. So this was very organic and, you know, things were changing very rapidly. Um, and the digital technologists were very much supporting their peers in schools. The schools that had educational technologists were also working with their staff. So you can imagine it was a huge amount of change. And I think, and, and I wasn't at all surprised, the staff were more worried about how the technology worked um, than the learning design or anything else. And I kind of can't blame them really. So I'll just show you a couple of exemplar modules. So these were set up by staff and I say that they did get tweaked as we went along as, as things sort of, as the baseline got refined. So, you know, um, this was one of our enthusiasts. Uh, they had a bit about the exemplar explaining to the staff what it was. Uh, he decided to put a discussion board so the staff could start to engage. Um, and also he, they figured it would be a good idea to test out the discussion board. Um, and then, you know, a bit about, so the sort of about a module was, was what was meant to be the first item, which is what the first thing students see. So that's one of our exemplars. Oops, that item wasn't meant to be there. Um, I thought I'd move that onto its own slide. We had another one. So this was uh, a different module. So they had the same idea about this exemplar, the introduction to the module, the module handbook, the discussion board, the graded, summative graded assessments, and they used um, a feedback form uh, for staff to give their feedback. So, you know, people were using this both to test out what a module could look like, but also to help their peers get to know them. So looking at some of these and um, others in other disciplines, we drew up an exemplar module um, and we put this as a template and gave it to everybody. Oh, I forgot. That's a bit about, about the 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 um, website that I can share with you later, the Blender module, which was very much, you know, we were looking at the ABC. We also introduced um, three learning experience types to go with the six ABC uh, tags that were developed by Glasgow Caledonian. So the well-being, signposting and socialisation. And one of the things I really focused on a lot was the signposting to help students. So we didn't have all these students saying you can't find the coursework. Um, as well as all the traditional ABC stuff. Um, and I think I heard people earlier mentioning well-being and sort of encouraging the students to get to know each other and to support each other. So we had, and you know, that was obviously in the socialization. So we had all of this in this um, resource that was open to all staff. But as I say, I think for most staff, their focus was just I just want to get it ready for the start of term. And they didn't have the headspace. There's so much else going on in, in the world at that stage. So this was our initial iteration of the default module. We quickly decided it was far too long. So we had like a welcome to this module. So this wee icon here um, in Blackboard language is called a learning module, which means it's basically um, a set of closely related design to be used in sequence content. Um, for those of you not familiar with Blackboard, it also has a content of a folder, which might be sort of linked, but not that closely linked set of resources. So, you know, if, if you've got um, maybe a set of images that students can pick from. So the idea of the learning module is, is very much that it's, it's sequential and it's linked. And when a student is in a page on the learning module, there are arrows to go back and forth to the next one. But when they get to the last one, this one here, um, they, they'd come to a dead end, so they'd have to leave it and go into the next learning module. So it, it kept things clumped. And we put in things here 
you know, like that uh, introductory activity. I heard people, you know, earlier we were talking about getting students talking to each other to get them talking to each other. Um, netiquette for students who weren't used to working online. Lots of things we thought would be useful. And then we moved into the module guide. Um, and then for each school, we've got school level resources as well. So obviously that depended on the school. And again, they put in various bits and pieces that we thought could potentially be useful. So we now move on a little bit. We also started um, really trying to find out how students were getting on to do a pulse survey. And the first time the pulse survey ran was September, uh, about October 2020. And these are the sorts of things that came back from students. You know, there's lack of clear instructions. They don't know whether they have to use Teams or My Dundee or what. Um, and, you know, and somebody else has said there's no consistency of what to do. Another student had said lack of consistency between all tutors on the course. So this is when you have multiple tutors on a single course. Couldn't even agree. Never mind between courses. And that was really typical of um, the first and the second semester in the year, you know, the 2021 20, academic year. So come the end of the year, we had some information. We had all the Pulse survey. We looked at all the staff student um, support requests to see what students were asking for, to see what staff were asking how to do. Um, I did an audit of um, a random sample of 10% of modules across the university to see how they were actually using the template. So we made some changes. Um, a pretty major update of the template slimmed it down quite a lot. So, you know, that first module, that first example I showed you that had things like um, the netiquette and the well-being and so on. We tried to remove almost all of the content from a module that wasn't module specific. Um, and I already showed you where we got that, the course level, the, the school level resources, and tried to move as much stuff as possible from module to course level or program level so that we didn't have loads of repeated information, which was getting at, you know, getting, um, even in a year, we'd seen stuff uh, changing um, and referring to older things that had changed where the central stuff had been updated. So, you know, part of this was uh, to make it easier for staff that they'd only have one location to update. We wanted some more school and discipline specific tweaks. So they started to come in, um, particularly really looking at how people were approaching the learning and teaching. Because that was only two parts of the template I showed you. If you went further down, we then gave um, disciplines a learning module per week of the course by default. Um, but again, things needed changed. So some departments stopped having weekly folders. Um, I created a short course that we put in my Dundee. So the first course that we'd done called Blend Your Module had been on um, an external facing site so that um, we could use it. People, It didn't matter if people didn't have access to my Dundee at the time. I then moved stuff a short course in my Dundee. We and the course really focused on how to use the template. Um, and we also had this concept of what the roles of the teacher were. Um, and I'll show you an image on that. And again, this change, the school educational technologists and the digital champions were really critical in supporting this. So, you know, what we had was we thought about the teacher having all these roles and we referred to them, you know, and what they should be doing in the course when they've got that sort of hat on. And we thought about, you know, what blended learning was and then various things. Um, again, going to back this idea of um, the the socialisation and the student engagement, how we, how we can get things, um, students to engage with each other. So that was a bit of an idea of how it was structured, and, you know, um, and we had a number of staff who were enrolled on this. We encouraged them all to join. Again, not many did, but some did. And we had one particular member of staff. I wasn't hosting this particular open session. It was somebody else. 
And this particular member of staff had always grumbled about things we'd done and had never been that keen, keen on technology. And whatever we did, oh, why have we got to do that? He rocked up and, and he said to the person who was hold, hosting this session on the, the day I wasn't able to get it, he said, he said, do you know what? I've just done this and now I know why Emma keeps telling me too. And I've forgotten what it was I've been telling him. Um, but, you know, it gave the staff the experience of actually seeing what it was like for students. So, and that was where some of the things like the signposting came in because they said, oh yeah, I didn't realise if they're on loads of course, you've got to label things really carefully. So, that was the summer of 2021. Um, we also had, during that summer after I created this test module, um, the, I'll just go back one slide. Oh, hang on. Oh, I've just gone all wrong. Um, hold on a minute. Let me just get back into PowerPoint so I can get to the correct slide. Uh, here we are. My title was summer 2021. Yep. And I've just got onto the next slide when we were looking at um, this. So towards the end of the summer, um, the people running the PG CAP had a look at, at this course. And although I'd really designed this for people who were used to teaching, they said, oh, we think this is really useful. Can we point students to it? So in the academic year of 21-22, uh, the staff on the PG CAP were told to do this at the start, and then they moved on to the PG CAP. Didn't quite work, and we'll go into that on the next slide. So summer 2022, we had fewer comments um, from students in the Pulse survey. We'd had an intention of doing some, you know, fewer negative comments. We'd had hoped to do some student focus groups to really look at, the, you know, the, te the template, what the template was meant to be, how staff were using it, what they thought could be enhanced. And our ideal was really to have done that quite early on in a semester so students wouldn't have necessarily learnt all the weird tricks they had to do to find the stuff they wanted it didn't run we and then by then we decided last summer that we really didn't want to put too much pressure on academic staff because again yet another summer of change so we had very very few updates um to the template last uh, summer 2022 the key one of the key changes was that the university had had a look at our template and the sort of um, default documents we had in it, which I'll, I'll show you um, in a few minutes. And they said, well, what we want is we're going to stop staff doing these great big long 50 or 60 page module handbooks that in many cases, only two or three pages are actually module specific and the other 47 pages are all like course specific. And we want staff to put all the module specific information in the template then if they want to also provide you know this downloadable 50 page document they can but it's kind of up to them to make sure that everything is consistent and that the 50 page document doesn't have as as i found in um some things when i was doing an audit referring back to software we'd stopped using about six years previously so and again i'm sure that's something you've all seen and the other thing that we did, a fairly major job we did in 2022 is we took parts of the Enhance Your Module and merged it into the PG CAP. Now, and we I took out all the stuff that was sort of referring to pre previous experience of teaching and assumed knowledge about teaching. So we just sort of got in the core stuff about um, using My Dundee and, and some of the things that I've put in, like the roles of the teacher that they decided they liked. Um, and I've got a section, we've got a section in it on in, uh, ensuring academic rigour, which again, um, the PG CAP team laughed, liked. So they sort of merged what they felt was the best of both. Right, roll forward now to summer 2023. So the 2022 Pulse surveys again showed more and more students were happy with My Dundee, fewer and fewer complaints. Our queries that were coming in were fewer um, when we were 
look at you know doing other support work in modules and people asked us to have a look at it again far more people were were sticking to the template we did have outliers we did see evidence um so for example the academic integrity statement was updated in the summer of 2022 when we were getting ahead of the game and we actually said you shouldn't be using tools you know ai tools uh such as quillbot or pseudo right because those are the ones that staff were worried about in the summer of 2022 before November the 30th 2022 and the birth of uh, chat GPT we still had some outliers we still had some people who would rather put everything in teams so there was a big crackdown came from above to get them out of teams get them into my Dundee um so we did a lot of work with those disciplines to really explain how the templates worked and how my Dundee worked. Uh, and we actually had somebody who was one of the worst culprits who said, our students can't use my Dundee. And, and they, this particular group of staff had tried to move stuff into my Dundee and they said it didn't work and they said the students didn't like it. So they said, well, the students don't like it. So we're going to carry on using Teams. And they said, can you come and show our students how to use my Dundee? And I looked at their courses and I said, I'm not going to. I said, there's no point in me telling well, I didn't quite tell them this. I thought this and I um I said it to Carl. I said, there's no point in me showing them how to use my dun showing the students how to use my dundee because the staff can't use it. So I'll only be telling the students what it should look like. Um and you know it'll then really come back to kick the the the, the staff in the pants. So you know we did lots of stuff with the staff in that particular um group of courses to really show them the benefits of getting stuff into my Dundee and its structure and, and what, what we were expecting from them now. Um, we also had some new staff who obviously needed it. That core content I've mentioned, um, I said we tried to take as much core content as possible out of each module, but there were still a few things that needed to stay in the academic integrity being an example. So one of our big things this summer was to take out that content as static documents within the VLE and replace it with hyperlinks and I even used um, internal short links in case um, IT decided to move uh, core information as they have a habit of doing. So we've now got everything set up with just a link and just a short link so that it can point to wherever the content is and we can then update content centrally. Um, and then I created something called get your module ready which I shall demonstrate, I hope. So this was back in um, on one of our websites. So this, this was a much bigger how to get your module ready for staff than we'd had before. We started off with a video telling them what was different from the previous year. We told them um, what the default structure is. So you've got sort of core, course information, assessment, and learning resources and we stressed sort of that this stuff you shouldn't be changing the structure this stuff you obviously are adding all the content you need these learning resources are where staff get that freedom to arrange their stuff um, in a way that suits them and the way they were teaching we then had a text thing to remind staff of what had changed so you know whether they were going to read it or watch the video um, you know important do not delete I can assure you that when I went and looked at some spot checks and modules, some people had deleted that stuff. Um, we let them know what the new features were. Oh, we had had a thing link, but we seem to have lost it again. We had had a thing link to get things ready. I need to go and chase that again. Um, and then we moved on to, you know, information about the module. Um, and then this was I stepped through every single thing that was in the module, um, which had also been available in this interactive thing link. So this is where we were really trying to get staff engaged. And um, so I did I had this. We also had module makeover sessions where I had sessions with people in person um, showing them what they should be doing. And we talked a lot about it. Um, and again, where staff, where students, where schools had 
support from education technologies and digital champions. So much more of a push really on how to get the module ready. Um, and if I now go to the next slide, one of the things that have come in that have pleased a lot of our art staff is that it's now also brought in this ability to have colourful icons. So a lot of people liked that. And that was a you know a new feature that I was able to say to some people, oh, look at these, we can now do this. Um, and so a couple of schools have now updated their exemplar modules that is used by staff, used by staff. Um, and this particular school has asked all of their um, tutors to use these particular three icons for sort of core information about the module guide, the assessment and feedback and the library resources. And then when it gets into the weekly folders, they're then picking images um, that relate to what they're being taught that particular week. So this year, we got our Pulse survey back a couple of weeks ago, and almost all of the, I, I really struggled to find negative comments, and the vast majority of negative comments about my D&D, one or two did say it wasn't structured, and when I had a look at which discipline they were in, I thought, uh, why am I not surprised? But this was the overwhelming were comments like this. Um, and I did like I did like this student. I thought it was fun to navigate. Um, I don't think they were quite aiming at it being fun. But, you know, understand the lessons better, which is an organised well, which is, is more what I was aiming for, and compartmentalised, and the coursework being neatly compartmentalised. So I think, like all these things, it always takes time to get a template set in. And so our next stage is we want to have a student panel um, and what I really want to do with this student panel is think about the learning resources. So that area where we don't necessarily need the consistency, because I think it's the, the information we want students to be able to find quickly to get all the information they need about their course. But it's when we get into the learning resources, that's then when we really want to work with staff and students to find out well, what's going to be the best way to organise in your discipline, in your subject that makes sense to to you as the student when you're you're doing your learning uh, and I say so that focus will be on the learning materials staff development though is going to have to run alongside it because you know there are still people that we need to work with to get using the template as it's designed to be used and ultimately to get consistency between modules um, so that's kind of it I'm not quite sure how I'm doing for time but I think I'm okay and I can see there's been one question uh, but if I will, I stop sharing my slide, my screen now. Um, I'll pause the share. And uh, can I now see the chat?